I held up a sign with a smiley because I was showing support for two climate activists who had been investigated for a climate strike. I, I did it at a place which was probably about um, 30 to 40 meters in front of a community club and the police station. So, and the picture taking didn't last more than a couple of seconds. So I don't think what I did was a threat to public order at all. So what I did was I posted it on social media. So um, a month after I had done that, the police contacted me and, and took a statement. I was charged under the Public Order Act uh, for not applying for a permit for one-person assembly. The, 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 the law calling a one-person, I mean, describing what I did as a one-person assembly is really um, vandalizing the English language, right? How can one person be an assembly? So, um, but the government has um, deliberately um, decided to charge me for it, I think because they're afraid of more copycat actions that might happen because of what I did. Well, in, in Singapore, doing a protest is, um, uh, can be quite scary, so a lot of people would be afraid of the legal implications of it. So, but I did get other kinds of support. So, um, people started to make smiley face signs and they sent photos of the smiley faces that they did and I posted them on social media. So, I, so about 300 people yeah, sent me um, their smiley faces in support. Being an active citizen, I um, uh, feel it's my obligation and duty on my own personal behalf and on behalf of my fellow citizens uh, to hold the regime that is in power to account. I tweeted, uh, this, someone had created a poster online uh, and this poster depicted the, it was in form of uh, an advert to the world um, and it had featured the, the picture of the current president. And this, this, this was on top of a campaign that was going viral online, a campaign um, that uh, uh, that uh, a petition, an online petition that had been signed by over 250,000 Kenyans, uh, asking the IMF uh, not to loan uh, Kenyan uh, money. The money that is borrowed ends up in people's pockets. So they've created this uh, extractive structure whereby uh, tenders go to his friends, his family, and. Uh, politicians close to him. Um, I tweeted uh, the, the poster in the morning, and then by 3 p.m., uh, those guys were knocking on my door. Before, I could pick up bits and pieces, so yeah, by, by the time we were getting there, it was about the poster, but nobody explicitly told me what I was being arrested for, because they tracked me using my phone number. Uh, which is illegal in itself. Uh, the, the group, the way the group was, um, you know, seven uh, cops in plain clothes. I could clearly see that uh, they came, you know, uh, to intimidate. But also the fact that this squad that that is plain clothes, uh, it's normally called the special service unit of the DCI or the, or the, or the DCI is equivalent of you know CID. It's used to disappear people in this country. Uh, so um, there was the fear that uh, is this the time the state finally uh, gets to eliminate me or will I actually be taken to a police station? And again, the regime knows that once people get to the point where they can express themselves publicly on social media about an issue, it's just a matter of time before they actually take some action offline. So, and, um, I believe part of my arrest was actually to intimidate uh, fellow active citizens not to share that post and not to engage uh, with the IMF issue. So as of March 2021, um, India accounts for about 70% of the global internet shutdowns, which are deliberate disruptions of the internet uh, on behalf of the state. The reasoning for internet shutdowns has gone from external threats, terrorism, to wanting to prevent students from cheating during exams, 
to anything. It, now, what's really problematic in India, especially in 2021 and 2020, is that we are going through an unimaginably difficult time with the pandemic. Not having access to the internet is pretty much not only you giving up, having to give up your right, your, your freedom uh, to expression, to assembly and association, it really does put your right to life, uh, health, safety, security directly in the line of fire um, because you are then unable to get the kind of information you need. The minute the internet goes back on, the descent is going to be back on. So instead of wasting your energy on shutting down the internet, on protecting yourself, it would make much more sense to deal with the actual problem and come up with real solutions. The, the, the state control media and the free press. So it's very difficult to, to have um, an independent newspaper to, to publish. And that is why we decided to use, to, to open our organization, form a, an online newspaper and write about these issues. You know, for me to live in a, a, a free society, I could not understand why the government was prohibiting people to write the truth or write about what's going on in the daily life. I think it's important for a society to have free press. Otherwise, um, the people could not understand or could not fully understand what's going on in their country or even in the world. But our website were being blocked in Vietnam since December 2017. What you're doing is not a crime, even though they are trying to put that label on us that we are just like people, criminal and criminal people who just like trying to uh, use the newspaper, the online newspaper to 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 propagandize against the state. I was shocked. Um, I was kind of sad because we're being blocked, but kind of kind of happy because it showed that the government did care about us. That means the information we put up there um, make some point, right? It, it, it did impact the, the country.